Hi, welcome back to my channel, I'm Mental Bear. I can't promise that this video isn't going to be just as cringy as the previous, but we can always hope, right? There you go, just as cringy. Psychology is a fairly new science, and some would say not a science at all. And science dates back to about the ancient Greece times, um, kind of like Socrates, Plato era, um, when people started to really think about thinking. And this form of thinking about thinking led to psychology today. And what turned it from philosophy to psychology was the idea of empiricism, which is you gather information by observation and you make assumptions through those observations rather than just thinking about logic and ideas as they kind of used to do. So at one point they thought the way that people moved was through animal spirits that caused that kind of like traveled through the body, then you moved. And that's how they thought that that worked. And clearly they were wrong, but started psychology kind of on a path of how do we do these things? Is it behavior? Is it conscious? Is it unconscious? All of these different ideas. And I think it's extremely important to understand the roots of psychology before you can really grasp how mental disorders work, um, their symptoms, their non-symptoms that sometimes present as symptoms, and every other contradicting and frustrating thing about psychology. Um, so we're going to go into that today before we, you know, get into like the super fun things like schizophrenia and, you know, disassociative identity disorder. Um, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the cringe. While the method of empiricism definitely guided psychology in the right track that led to today's, you know, today's known psychology, um, it was a long process and it wasn't actually until the 1870s that psychology really started becoming more than a thinking man's hobby. Um, this is due to the fact that William Wundt um, established the first psychology laboratory in Germany. And he worked on consciousness and moved psychology from the philosophy of mental processes to the science of mental processes. And after Wundt came the Gestalt psychologist in the early 1900s. And rather than looking at consciousness in pieces such as Wundt did, um, these guys suggested that consciousness should be looked as a whole. Um, these guys' names were Max Weathermere, Kurt Kafka, and Wolfgang Kohler. Um, after these three guys came the most famous one that most people kind of link with psychology, which is Sigmund Freud. Um, a lot of people use Freud as an example of why psychology is kind of a ridiculous science uh, because of his assumptions that children wanted to sleep with their parents at certain ages. And while the psychology community sees Freud as not being exactly right on some of his assumptions, he definitely pushed psychology into more treatment methods such as psychotherapy. And the great thing about Freud is that even though he was wrong, he, they, he got people thinking about the fact that there are layers of consciousness and that we do things sometimes unconsciously or subconsciously. Um, we can get into Freud if you guys want to on a whole nother video. I could probably do like a whole series on that guy. And after him came John B. Watson and his theory with behaviorism. Watson was kind of one of the first behaviorists that we know of. Um, he viewed behavior as the single most important scientific information psychologists could use. Um, he felt like there was no need to look at conscious or unconscious mental processes, and he really wanted to focus all of the attention on a patient or client's behavior. He even went so far as to suggest that studying consciousness alone would prevent psychology from ever becoming a true science. B.F. Skinner was the, founding, was the founder of learning theories. He studied, um, I think, after Watson, and he looked at how learning, um, how learning, reward, and punishments could influence behavior. And in today's psychology, mental processes and behavior are studied together rather than separate. So there's no more argument kind of of, hey, consciousness is the right way to go, or no, behaviorism is what it's all about, rather... We, we, we look at them together, and that's what makes psychology today so awesome and so interesting. Now, it may seem slightly boring to talk about a bunch of dead old guys who 
started psychology when we really just want to get into like the nitty gritty of schizophrenia and crazy people. Um, but you have to remember that th there was just so much vastness of the way these people thought and the way they moved psychology into what we know today as a legitimate science. And there's, there's no two cases alike and two cases can't be treated the same way, even if they're the same symptoms. And it's because of these guys, these all these old dead people that we have to thank for that. that so many just different approaches. And just because, like, let's say somebody is doing research, um, just because you find something that the general population doesn't agree with doesn't mean that it's just... Um, irrelevant. It's not irrelevant. That's the word I was looking for. Welcome back to the cringe, everybody. Um, so with this being said, um, as we can, as I continue making videos um, about different cases, different disorders, different symptoms, my own anecdotes, maybe other people's anecdotes, I just, we just need to remember that psychology is fluid and it's not always set in stone. People with disorders sometimes don't align perfectly with the DSM, which is kind of like the diagnostic hand guide, so to speak. Um, and this is so vital to understanding psychology in the terms of stigma, because people want perfect patients. They want perfect disorders. Along with different approaches to psychology and the diverse history that encompasses it, there's multiple types of psychology, from forensic psychology to industrial psychology to psychotherapy to anything really under the sun. I mean, there's psychologists that work with artificial intelligence and I would love to go into all of them, but it's extremely tedious and I don't really want to. So the whole point of this video is to discuss the diversity of the field of psychology. It's not all mental hospitals and schizophrenics. It's boring disorders such as general anxiety and minor depression. And I find it extremely important to discuss these these boring topics as well as the hot hotter button topics hot issue hot top button you so the next few videos i think i'm going to focus on depression the different types treatments medications some anecdotes that i have and they're all going to be separate videos because you guys can't keep your attention for more than you know four minutes at a time which is probably only got 26 views it's nothing to do at all with the fact that i'm really bad at making youtube videos and i'm extremely cringy to watch and thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe like comment whatever um i'm mental bear and i don't have a catchphrase yet this is a recording because i don't have a song do in this video to you.